Hello, welcome to our Atomic History Notes. Right now it's the fifth for me, but whatever date it is, you put it there. And specifically, we're going to be looking at the people. discoveries and models of the atom. And it only makes um, sense to me to go in chronological order. So we're going to go way back in time to about 460 BC. And there was a philosopher named Democritus. And a philosopher, <clears throat> these were people that were considered really important in society and their main job was to just think. So it's almost like their job, and we'll say they quote, got paid all day to ponder ideas and think. Um, if you look at his name, Democritus was the father of democracy, and he thought of those political ideas. Um, but they were not as niche as nowadays, like you are a particle physicist. Back when you were a philosopher, maybe you thought of many different things like science and government. Um, so he was known as the laughing philosopher. Um, because he put an emphasis on, he thought it was very important to be happy and just to have overall good well-being. Um, at that time, that was not a popular belief. So he thought of the idea of the atom. And how he thought that, he just was thinking, okay, if I have this object and I break it in half and then I break it in half again and again and again and again, am I ever going to reach a point where I can't break it in half again? And he thought eventually you'd have to reach that point. And what should we call the smallest thing? The smallest thing is atom. And when you look at the Greek um, derivative of what that word means, pretty much means the smallest part. Um, so that's why he chose that name of atom. Now, unfortunately, there was another philosopher at the time, Aristotle, which I'm sure you've heard of because he's very powerful um, and he was pretty famous. He did not like this idea of the atom and he kind of told everyone, eh, I don't think so. And because his um, opinions carried so much weight, no one really thought about it anymore, even though obviously Democritus was onto something. Um, so because of Aristotle, there's a big gap in history where we didn't make any advancements with this idea other than there must be some very small unit um, that you get down to that you can't break it anymore. So now we're gonna zoom forward through history all the way to 1878. Um, and we get to a guy with way too many names. His <clears throat> name that he was born with is William Thompson. <clears throat> but he is often called Lord Kelvin. Um, because of his discoveries and who he was, he was prominent in society. He was given lordship, um, and this is over in England, and he's called Lord Kelvin because he lived by the Kelvin River, and that's just a like a geographical point so people would know, okay, this guy, he's important, he has lordship, and he's from the Kelvin region. 
um, but his real name's William Thompson. So people get their discoveries confused because they're like, wait, are we talking about William Thompson or are we talking about Lord Kelvin? And it turns out those are the same people. Um, he came up with this idea that the atom is mostly empty space and has these like negative charges in it. And then he knew that he knew the atom overall was neutral. So if it has these negative charges, um, it would have like a positively charged area. So this model, he decided, I gotta pick a name for this. It's gonna go down in all the science textbooks. Everybody's gonna learn about this. So I'm gonna name it after a famous dessert. Um, a dessert that everybody eats and everybody knows what it is. Um, and so he decides that plum pudding, it's what he's gonna name this model. Now there's where his idea was faulty. We don't eat plum pudding, so when we hear that, that doesn't help us understand it. Um, I think the chocolate chip cookie model, like if the negatives are the chocolate chips and then the rest is the cookie, that makes more sense to us. Plum pudding was a dessert, it was kind of like bread, bread pudding, and it had little bits of dried plum in it. Um, very popular at the time, but obviously we don't eat that, so that sounds bizarre to us. Something about William, um, we will put, we are in England. And he did a lot of his studies and research at the University of Cambridge. And I just remembered, we didn't put where Democritus, he is Greek, happening over in Greece. This theme of University of Cambridge is just going to keep repeating itself. So now we go about to the year of 1880 to a guy named J.J. Thompson. And now it's really confusing because these guys have the same last name. Um, J.J. Thompson is credited with discovery of the electron. And um, he is also from England. He also stayed at Cambridge. I'm just going to put Cambridge U for university. And he discovered the electron with a really fancy piece of equipment called a cathode ray tube. And this is really fancy because you got to think it was 1880 and he's doing this. So we've got this tube um, and it's sealed off. And then we've got like clamps on here putting a charge through it. And so I'm going to represent that charge with this like dotted line. And the charge of electricity going through there was positive. Then he shot some atoms through here and noticed they'd all be deflected away. And if they go away from the positive, he goes, oh, okay, so there must be electrons in there and they're negative. And um, he chose the word electron, obviously relates to electricity. Electrons are negative and repelled 
by positive charge. And again, J.J. Thompson used the cathode ray tube. All right, so now we have where we are in history. We know there is an atom, um, and we know there are electrons. And according to Lord Kelvin, they're kind of just like floating around there all mixed in. Um, next up, we get to this guy, Ernest Rutherford. And around the year 1910, He does some very famous experiments. Um, turns out that he worked under J.J. Thompson at Cambridge University. So Ernest was like his student. And there's even notes from J.J. Thompson saying like, I think Ernest is the most promising student and physicist. Um, his ideas are very noteworthy. So J.J. Thompson thought really highly of his student who was Ernest Rutherford. He is credited with a lot of things. Um, he discovered the nucleus. And discovered protons. And he did protons after the nucleus. So I guess we should put discover the nucleus, then discovered protons. All right, I think we should leave the rest of um, this discovery for part two.